Chapter 19. After dealing with his mother, Palmer turned his attention to the guys. Certain scenarios gave him the sweats. It is afternoon and the guys are in the backyard just as Nipper swoops in to land on the porch roof. Or the guys sneak into his room at night as they did before and one of them opens the closet door. He toyed with the idea of coming right out and telling them they can never come to his room again. Tell them the room was crawling with cooties or a guy used to live there. But he knew that would never work. Telling Beans not to trespass would be useless as telling Nipper not to peck. Or he could tell them his mother said they were no longer welcome to his house. A lie. Because she didn't like them. The truth. But he didn't have the nerve to say it. And so he tried simply to give them a reason not to to not want to come to his house. One Saturday, for example, Beans decided they should all have lunch at Palmer's. They had done so a few times before, and Beans had always found something he loved in the refrigerator. Thinking fast, Palmer told them the refrigerator had broken, roaches had infested the kitchen, and they had nothing in the house but tuna fish and water. Beans believed him. Another time, they had been playing outside in the snow, and Beans decided he was too cold. Let's go to Palmer's, he said. We don't have heat. Palmer said. Our heater broke. Beans said he didn't care. The house had walls and a door, didn't it? So that's where they headed. Palmer could not think of anything until they were at his front steps, when suddenly he pointed across the street and yelled, Let's bomb fish faces! By the time they finished snowballing Dorothy Grezik's house, it was nearly white, and Beans had forgotten that he was cold. It became a habit using Dorothy to to divert attention from himself and his house. As soon as the guys would drift onto Palmer's block, he made his move. Let's bomb Fishface's house. Let's bomb Fishface's car. Let's bomb Fishface. When there was no snow on Dorothy Grezik's sidewalk, they brought their own chalk and drew funny faces in her hopscotch squares. They ambushed her on the way home from school. They taunted her and ran rings around her as she walked. Sometimes they simply stood in front of her in the middle of the sidewalk, like human trees, forcing her to walk around them. Then they would run ahead and become new sidewalk trees, making her detour around them time after time, all the way home. Beans gave the game a name, Tree Stumping. One day, Dorothy was not there. She was homesick. The snow had melted. There was nothing to bomb her house or car with. Every hopscotch square had been funny-faced. I'm cold, said Beans. Turning to Palmer, let's go to your house. And Palmer, with no time to think, heard himself say, let's go to your house.